All right, guys, uh, today's discussion debate is going to be on wheel landings and three point landings. There's only a couple things in aviation where you could debate all day long in the hangar, and, and wheel landings and three point landings seem to be one of those topics. Um, sorry to disappoint you, but for me, I, I, like, them, I like them both. I do, I do plenty of wheel landings, I do plenty of three point landings. Um, I think you should be proficient in both. All right, here we go. Uh, to the right is going to be a wheel landing. If you take a look, take a look at the elevator too. Uh, it's pretty flat. And then right as the mains touch down, I release the back pressure and, you, and you'll see the elevator. I'll go slightly forward with the stick. Where on the left, you can see the elevator is already all the way back, sticks full back, and the airplane uh, is going to stall onto the runway. If you see the door there, that's an indication that the airplane is done flying. And there you go. It settles on, on all three. Again, a quote that I always go back to is, you know, flying is the artful application of a scientific process. And, and I love that because yes, um, aerodynamics and, and gravity and all that stuff are, are, is the final law, but you know, three point landing or wheel landing, how are you gonna get the airplane on the ground? It's kind of just up to you and, and your technique um, and how you wanna fly the airplane. So I, I love that quote. So there's a wheel landing, three point landing, and there's basically two ways of doing both. Um, and Wolfgang calls it the, the lazy three-point landing and then the full stall uh, three-point landing. So in the Cub, think of you're flying along a couple feet off the runway, you know, as the airspeed bleeds off, you bring that stick back, 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 back until the airplane stalls and then it kind of settles on the runway in the three-point attitude. That'd be the full stall three-point landing. All right, a couple things to take note here. So as I start to bring the elevator back, Get the airplane in the, in the three-point attitude. You see the door starting to go up. The airplane is just prior to stall. And here the airplane is stalling onto the runway. You'll see the mains and the tailwheel touch down pretty much at the same time. A little bit of a bounce, but again, I keep the elevator all the way back. Uh, and that's what's important. And then here I obviously brought it up because I went around to do a couple more. So again, the trick is to keep the airplane flying for as long as you can. And then land, and uh, the goal is to land in a full stall three-point attitude. All right, clear the trees in a slip. And now hold it about five, six feet off the runway. Keep it flying, keep it flying, keep it flying, keep it flying, flying, and there you go. Drop it in. And then there's the one that, that I probably do more than, than anything. It's the three-point landing where the, you, you bring the stick back and the airplane kind of settles nicely in a three-point attitude just prior to stall. So the airplane's not really stalling onto the runway, but you're kind of rolling it on in a three-point attitude. Um, and, and that's kind of nice to do. It's a little easier on the airplane and it, it's nice because you, you can barely feel the transition from uh, flying to, to landing. So that's, that's kind of nice. The advantages of a three-point landing, and this is why I would do them almost exclusively for the first six months of, of Cub ownership, is you know when the airplane lands in a three-point attitude, number one, the airplane's done flying, and number two, the, the tailwheel is down on the ground. Um, so you have full control, you have tailwheel steering. Where in a wheel landing, there's a little bit of that gray area where you start to slow down and the rudder loses its effectiveness because of the slower airflow, but the tailwheel is not down for steering and you're a little bit more susceptible to, to weather veining. Um, and that's where things can get tricky on the rollout where if the airplane weather veins, the tailwheel comes down and you start to swerve, you get on the brakes and before you know it, you're, you're off in the weeds and, and ground looped. Um, so that's the nice advantage of, of the three-point landing is that the airplane's done flying and the, the, the tail wheel's down. When you're doing a three-point landing, um, just imagine that anytime you bring the stick back, that there's, um, it's kind of like a ratchet where you can't go the other way, right? So imagine there's a, just a metal bar that anytime you bring that stick back, you can't go forward again. Because what happens is people will they'll bring the stick back and they'll feel like they're ballooning and then they'll push forward and then you get into this really, really bad oscillation thing and then you'll bounce and it just it becomes a mess. So what I tell people is if you bring the stick back and you think you're floating, just, just hold it right where it is. And then as it starts to settle again, then start bringing it back again. Or if you feel like it's sinking just a little too rapidly, just go ahead and give yourself a little burst of power and then bring the power back and that'll usually 
um, cushion cushion the sinking or, or prevent you from sinking any further. So just these are, you know, again, these are things that I explain on the video, but until you actually go out there and start flying, we really kind of um, get the hang of it. Um, but the advantage of a wheel landing is number one, you're coming in a little faster, so you have more flight control authority if it's windy. Uh, and number two, it's a little easier, at least for me, to spot land the airplane because you're essentially flying it onto the runway. So you put the airplane down when and where you want it. Um, you got a little bit higher of a speed, but it's a cub. It's not really going that much faster. Power on, power off. It's really just a personal thing. I'll usually do power off wheel landings uh, unless I'm flying with somebody else because when the airplane's a little heavier, I like to keep just a little bit of power right before I touch down. Um, and Wolfgang said it best. He goes, you want to compare a wheel landing in an airplane. It's kind of like parking a car up against the curb. Um, you want to get as close to the curb as you can with, with just just without touching it or just barely skimming it. Um, and that's kind of what it's like in a wheel land. You want to get down just, just as close as you can as the runway and just kind of kiss the runway. And then as, as you kiss the runway, you know, release back pressure or go forward on the stick and just kind of bring the power back if you had any power in. One thing I want you to notice is how much rudder requires the track straight on pavement. Pavement, the airplane wants to track all over the place. And then also, once the rudder starts to fade, you can see how I bring the tail wheel down. There's a wheel landing where I go stick neutral. I don't really go stick forward, and the airplane kind of bounces a little bit. Uh, now here on the next wheel landing, um, you'll see I'm a little bit more aggressive with going forward on the stick, and you'll see that helps keep the airplane uh, a little bit more um, planted on the ground because I have that negative angle of attack on the wing. Here's the inside approach for the wheel landing. Now, if you haven't noticed, the, the wheel landing and three-point landing, the approaches are essentially the same right up until they get right up until the point where you're uh, you're gonna flare. All right, come over the trees, put in a slip to get down as quick as I can, and I kind of just fly it onto the runway. And in this case here, I don't really go forward on the stick too much. I just kind of keep it um, stick neutral for the most part. There you go, I touch down and then stick neutral. Now here's uh, the approach of three point landing on the left, wheel landing on the right. Everything looks essentially the same. Now right here, take a look at the stick. On the left, see how it's all the way back, and on the right, it's pretty much neutral. That's the difference on touchdown right there. All right, top you have a wheel landing, which is exaggerated, bottom is a three point. But there you go, there's, there's a good side view. If I have a steady, strong crosswind, I like to wheel land it, and I, you know, I like to fly the airplane in because again you're going to be at a higher higher airspeed so you have more flight control authority land on that upwind wheel first get the downwind main down make sure i'm tracking straight down the runway bring the power back if it isn't already at idle and then fly the tail down onto the onto the runway and then bring the stick all the way back with the aileron into the wind Uh, landing a, in a crosswind is much easier in uh, on on grass uh, grass as you can see here, but same concept applies. You know, land on the upwind wheel first, get the aileron into the wind, and here's a three pointer in grass. We're basically upwind main and the tail wheel at the same time. If it's kind of a variable gusty wind. Then I'll three-point it, and the reason why is because I want the airplane to be done flying. Um, if I feel if, if it's gusty and I'm trying to wheel it on there, um, I tend to bounce. So I personally like to just three-point it, drop the airplane in. This way I know it's done flying and I have um, tailwheel steering immediately. And then uh, one thing I did want to say is if it is variable uh, and gusty, you know, the airplane only weighs 750 pounds. So if you're going to do a three-point landing when it's gusty like that, you have to be careful because not only is it the, are you going to get blown around, but if the wind just drops off, you, you leave yourself to um, 
basically being, you know, 10 feet in the air, uh, fully stalled and really coming down. So you do have to be prepared to not only go around, but, um, you know, add power to kind of soften that cushion if, if need be. So I just wanted to point that out. That's just if the wind's kind of variable. But again, steady crosswind, I personally prefer a wheel landing. I think it's, it's, it's a lot easier. And this is stuff that, you know, you'll work out with your airplane. Um, it's kind of just a personal preference thing, but that's, that's kind of what I prefer. So, um, but you know, the, the landing itself is, is the same, whether it's a wheel or a three point land, you know, wheel or three pointer with a crosswind. And I've been working on a video, a crosswind video that I'll, I'll show you next week, but, um, upwind wheel first, downwind wheel second, and then ailerons into the wind. Um, the difference is just essentially the, the tail being up in the air. And what I see some people do, um, is they keep the tail up way longer than I personally feel comfortable with or way longer than I would. And again, the, the risk there is you have the, the, the tail wheel is not down and you lose rudder authority. So you have potential to weather vein. And then if the airplane kind of starts to track off to the side, the tail goes down and then you kind of get yourself into a situation where you could potentially ground loop. Um, so I mean, ground looping is not the end of the world. I uh, was in an airplane that ground looped and it was, uh, you know, it was, it was scary, but uh, it was a good experience because it, it, it happens quick, but it also felt like it happened in slow motion. Um, but that's, that's a whole other story for, for another video. Um, so, uh, but anyway, wheel landing, three point landing, uh, in the J3, it really just depends. I know I, I, I'll post a wheel landing and the comments will start rolling in. Oh, only a purist uh, would do a three-point landing or a three-point landing is the real way to land a tail dragger. I really don't have a preference. I like doing them both. I think you should be proficient in both. I know some people are, you know, they're diehard three points and they won't ever do wheel landings, which, you know, you really should be uh, proficient in both um, because I think they both serve their, their purposes um, a little differently. But Again, some situations I'd much prefer to land in a three-point attitude, while other situations like a strong crosswind, I'd rather wheel it on and, and fly the airplane onto the runway and then and then do that. So I'm curious what the majority of you guys do though. So just put let me know in the comments if uh, if you guys prefer three points when it's windy or wheel landings if it's gusty. Um, you know, again, uh, if if you're just starting out or if you want to learn about um, flying tailwheels. Two books I recommend, uh, Stick and Rudder by Wolfgang Languish, maybe is how you say his last name, um, or Taming, Taming the Tail Dragger by uh, John Ball. So two good books that I recommend. And, and what's cool about um, especially Stick and Rudder is it was written in the early 40s. So, you know, before the jet age and, and before all modern airliners were normal tricycle gear uh, um, airplanes. So it's just it's kind of unique.